Okay, let's see. It is December 31st, 2018, and it is 11.53 p.m., so in seven minutes it is going to be January 1st of 2019. So, of course, in the rest of the world, in some places, you know, it's already 2019. This is Central Time Zone here in the United States. want to wish everybody a, a Happy New Year. I always, <clears throat> when I was uh, younger, and for quite a few years, made resolutions. You know, in my mind, I never wrote them down or anything, but I, of course, it will... <clears throat> always be the same, you know, same sort of resolutions. And uh, sometimes I would uh, even do those things for X amount of time, but then eventually. Uh, I'm somebody, too, that, well, it was easier for me to make a resolution like, you know, this is a New Year's resolution. You'd think... You know, at any time you could say, okay, I'm going to, you know, eat less or I'm going to uh, exercise every other day or do something. For me, it was much easier to do it like, you know, January 1st. Uh, but then once I failed, then I, uh, let's see, hang on here a second need somebody to remind me to do this. <clears throat> Once I would uh, fail, then I uh, then I just gave up. You know, instead of saying, well, I broke down and, you know, ate candy, but okay, that's just one time. And I remember doing that a couple times, like, because uh, I used to eat a lot of uh, candy when I was younger especially. I can remember, though, later, like, uh, working at a hospital, midnight shift, and when I was inside, well, I think I did it mainly when I was inside. We had one officer inside in civilian clothing who just roamed all over wherever he wanted to, and when I did that, I'd make the rounds and be a candy machine and I'd have a candy bar or whatever but and I'd have you know <laughs> working eight hours shift or whatever I had a few candy bars but and I made the like a resolution no candy bars not doing that not just on that shift but no candy bars and I think I probably went months and then I was going through the hospital and a nurse said no I guess it wasn't just candy bars it was like cookies and donuts and stuff like that I went through the hospital and a nurse said, Hey, Jim, I made these cookies over here for the staff and everything. Come on over. And I went over and had a few cookies and walked away. And, ah, damn. Well, I had the cookies. So then I just went, you know, to the vending machine, got me a candy bar and back doing it. And that was the way I also was with uh, when I was in grade school. Maybe high school. I'm not sure. I know in grade school, uh, I was a Catholic. So I would go to confession. And, of course, you never really told the priest. Uh, you know, you just didn't tell the priest everything. You didn't tell the priest. You know, or you, you know, I had impure thoughts, you know. Oh, uh, but <clears throat> when I would come out of the confessional, I felt, oh, my. I felt, by the way, there's gunshot, gunshots going off. I don't know a lot. Don't know if the microphone, I've been hearing, I heard some earlier, too. Uh, every... 
Fourth of July, every New Year's, there are uh, a bunch of guys that, that it's an excuse to fire their, to shoot their gun. You know, they may have a new gun or they may just want to fire off some rounds and it's an excuse to do it. Uh, it's very dangerous, by the way, shooting. I remember a number of incidents where that I've heard about where one was, a, I think, an eight-year-old girl, something like that in Kansas City, Missouri. I wasn't back there then, but I remember because it was Kansas City, Missouri, reading about it uh, wherever I was, Florida. Uh, some guys were out on their patio or deck. It seemed like it was an upper deck. And there was, must have been an apartment complex. Could have been a condo or whatever. And they were, uh, I'm just wondering if you're picking that up. Uh, several guys were out there and they, there was a lake, not a giant lake, a small, you know, lake like an apartment complex or something. And they were shooting at it. And uh, there was a girl, I think she was eight years old, and the dad was, it was 4th of July because they were bar gonna, they were barbecuing and uh, everything and the little girl was out there, bullet hit her and killed her. I remember reading, you probably, probably heard that. Anyway, it is, it's really dangerous. Shooting, shooting rounds up in the air are, is also dangerous. That's, that's not fireworks. Wow, this is Sounds like a shotgun. Well, more than one. Somebody's had a little something to drink. Okay, well, off that subject. Uh, oh, anyway, I would go to confession, and I would come out of confession, and I would feel great. Oh, just all the guilt because of... A Catholic, you could send by thought, word, and deed. And uh, so then for a few days or a week, uh, some period of time, I felt, and then as soon as I did something wrong, then it was like, okay, fuck it, uh, This is the most I've heard in the, even more than like on the 4th of July. Now the 4th of July you have, fireworks are not legal, but they mix, you do hear some fireworks mixed in on the 4th of July. This sounds like some guys that have been drinking together and they're getting a chance to uh, fire some old ammo and use it up. I hope nobody gets hurt. Uh, what did I want to, okay. This desk is a really heavy, nice desk, but man, it, 
I have the sandpaper and I don't have any of the, uh, I could make it look, kind of looks bad. I have, um, the last video I think I talked about the new radio that I was going to buy. I uh, did purchase it. It's a Yezu uh, FT70D, only $135. It's a, you know, dual band. Um, amateur radio, 2 meter, 440. It picks up other frequencies, uh, I forget the range, up to about 500 megahertz. Um, very easy to program, but I also have the software for it. I really like the radio. It's a really good deal at $135. I think it's going to stay at that price range. It's, uh, uh, does digital too. So it does FM, so far as transmitting, you know, and receiving it does FM and does fusion, Yezu's digital fusion, it does that. Like I said, I have the software. Now I think that's some fireworks there. Um, it does the fusion, really not, it's really well designed, waterproof. Uh, everything. Uh, it's easy too just to <coughs> use a keyboard to do things. I have a few channels that I programmed in using the software. Nobody's talking. Ham radio operators nowadays are so old they're all probably sleeping and including myself you know. Uh, what I don't like about it, I put the belt clip on it, but in order to use the software that is free, that you can download, and the, uh, you know, cable is, is free that comes with it, in order to do that, <laughs> it's not like the other Yezu that I had, or the... Kenwood that I've had, whatever, where, you know, you go in through the speaker and then plug into USB on your computer and you can program it that way. Here you plug in the power, you take off the battery, you then uh, unplug Let's see, I think then then you plug in the cable, USB cable, then you take out the power supply that's going to it, then you uh, power it up, and with the belt clip on the back, it was kind of inconvenient, it was, so I took the belt clip back off, so I, I don't care for that too much. Getting it for free, the software for free, and having the cable come for free, that's a good, everything you need. And also, it's so easy to just program it by the keyboard. Uh, also, what I don't like about it is, I think it's six characters that it has, so you can, you know, mark what, um, and somehow <clears throat> what the repeater is or what, what you want to say, you know, uh, ISS for the International Space Station or whatever. I wish it was longer. I'm thinking, though, maybe in the settings I can go. I can't make it any longer. But I also don't care for the script, the way it looks. Now, this is okay, K5COW, but some of the... Uh, If that's still people firing off their guns, they must have a lot of money. Ammunition is pretty expensive. Not sure what they're shooting. 
Um, anyway, a nice radio. I'll probably do some sort of a report on, the, you know, a little uh, review of it. Although there are some excellent reviews on YouTube for it. Uh, here's the book, by the way, the manual. Pretty good manual. I downloaded, though, the uh, PDF files. They're on my computer someplace. Uh, I am... I'm using my, um, I just kicked it back out of 4K mode uh, for the last few days or week or whatever. I've just been using my 27-inch monitor in 4K mode. Even making the adjustments that you make to, uh, yeah, it's starting to hurt my eyes. But 4K was nice. Um. But I brought up my other, and I did have my uh, Roku TV setting here. I took the Roku, set it down, hooked up uh, the 27A Zeus mon uh, monitor. So now, and I changed the settings on my 4K to 18, 1920 by 1080. And over here, this is a regularly, you know, 1920 by 1080. So I have the two monitors side by side. So I can drag stuff back and forth and and uh, do that. Um, I played Civilization VI in... You know, 4K, and it, it was okay. Cause I have a new video card that my grandson gave me um, that he put in for me also. But anyway, I played a little Civilization Six a while ago, and I kicked it, of course, back into 19, you know, 80 by 10, 1020 by 1980, and that's fine also. Um, what else is going on? There is a ham fest coming up, and I haven't been to one in quite a few years, and I haven't been to one here in Fort Worth. This is by the Cowtown Amateur Radio Club. And I contacted them for a table, and I haven't heard anything back. So, because I want to get a table and put some of the stuff that I've got out for sale. And I haven't heard back from them. So, I'm either going to have to jump on the their repeater and ask somebody. But I actually heard somebody on the repeater. Uh, somebody, another ham, asked him if... Uh, He'd got his table yet, and he said, yeah, he got his table. But I think what it may be is that they were on the, probably a ham member of the Cowtown Amateur Radio Club, probably at a club meeting, you know, said, hey, I need a table, and it's probably taken care of. But I, I want to know before I go if I am going to have a table, because I'd like to print up a few flyers and uh, do a few things like, you know, like that. Plus, too, I don't want to haul a bunch of stuff out there in the trunk of the car. I don't have a car. It'll be, be Hillary's car. So. It is now 12-12. It is now January 1st of 2019. And it is now 12-12. And uh, it is quiet. They must have ran out of ammo. Um, there again, please, because I've 
I've read, never been involved with uh, on a situation. I never had to take a report or whatever, but I've kind of wondered if I ought to tell something or no, I don't want to start to, you know, something from the old days. I don't want to start to, on a bummer thing. But, um, oh, I just got Amazon just, uh, yeah, Amazon just, the other day, deposited, uh, I think it was $32 into my bank account. But that's for like three months. <laughs> but uh, still, I'll put the link below. If you can, when you, and bookmark it or something, please, when, if you can, when you're going to go to Amazon, please use my link to go there and then from there, go wherever you want to go. And uh, then if you purchase something, I will get a commission. It'd be nice for that to be uh, a little more. Uh, like $100 a month or something like that would be really nice. Because then that, I, could, I could buy more stuff. More toys. Is that thunder I hear? I bet there is someplace a um, display, you know, maybe a sporting event just ended or uh, someplace there's a, a display going off. I worked so many years, you know. I've mentioned that I worked hospital security for like 30 years. I actually, you know, I worked, started out life as a welder, a boilermaker. I built gigantic trucks and regular sized trucks, and rebuilt railroad cars. Worked at oil refinery in Convent, Louisiana. Worked for the post office for a short period of time, and I quit them. They couldn't believe anybody quit a civil service job. Um, I worked for a, a mafia guy, uh, setting up mobile portrait studios for a while. I... Uh, My wife and I had a tropical fish shop for four years. Uh, I had a patrol service for about a year. I sold advertising. I sold printing to businesses, but I didn't have the courage, the self-esteem or whatever it was, to go to a big business. So I sold to little neighborhood shops or whatever, and I enjoyed that a great deal. The mobile portrait studios, I enjoyed doing that too. Um, till the government came in and seized everything because uh, the guy wasn't paying taxes. And uh, I think he had some, they treated me nice. Although one of the places that I, it was my job to, I was there, he had the mobile portrait studios. He advertised for, I think I mentioned this, he advertised for a photographer. And I, I've always loved photography and I saw that and I went down and I, and he said, I don't know why I advertise for a photographer. Meanwhile, they're there in their suits, smoking their cigars. And, uh. As soon as I went in, I thought, I'm not sure the movie Godfather was out then. But anyway, it was like, oh my. <laughs> but he said, I don't know why I advertise for a photographer. I've got these mobile 
Portrait Studios trailers. And uh, let me enlarge this again. I've got these trailers, and I need to get them booked into places. And then so I said, what's involved? So he talked to me for like an hour, or not very long, you know. Well, you would, what I'd want you to do is arrange for these to be put into shopping center malls or whatever. And then you go to the, you have to get permission from the places. And then you set up the easels and you put the, take maybe take a picture of the, uh, and the pictures were gigantic. They weren't in color. They were gigantic. And uh, so then you, Maybe take a picture of the manager or the clerk at the place and put it in the, by the front door. And the advertising that you stick in there, if a person comes out at discount, you know, if the person comes out and says, you know, well, then the store would also get, you know, a commission. And uh, what else? Anyway, I ended up having to, anyway, I ended, I, anyway, I went out surprised me because at that point I didn't know but anyway I went out and booked in two trailers <laughs> and came back in a couple of hours and said okay we need you guys need to have your guys put a trailer in such and such and you need the other trailer to go such and such and the one trailer that's going there will need you know a generator but the one going here we can plug into their electricity and whatever then I had to hire uh, people for the, you know, and uh, anyway, one of the tra trailers that I put in at, uh, in Raytown, I forget where it was, but anyway, in a Raytown, it had a pipe bomb put on it. Apparently, uh, I had booked it into uh, somebody else's territory, so... That was another indication that, uh, but, so what else did I, did I mention I worked for the post office? Uh, radio Shack, I was a, for a short period of time, a Radio Shack uh, manager trainee. Mm. Anyway, worked hospital security for 30 years, but I worked at different hospitals. But I worked 18 years for one hospital, but I, they it ended up taking over 11 hospitals, so then I was sent to work for 10 years at one hospital in my hometown, a small, small town. That was great. I was like half a mile from the hospital. Then I worked a year in Lee Summit Hospital. I worked a year at Menorah Hospital. Actually, that's before we took them over. That was the second job because I needed to, the money to pay two years of back income tax. And the reason I hadn't paid the income tax was I got married at 26, divorced at 40. We had four kids, and so I paid the ex-wife directly, not through uh, the courts or whatever at that time. Now I think probably it's mandatory. I don't know. Um, and I covered them with health insurance, of course. Um, but I, from the very beginning, I told the you know ex-wife. Uh, I'll claim the kids as deductions. She said, fine. So then eventually, after a few years, she moved in with her mother. So that year, whatever, I, I called up and I, I said, you know, I'm getting ready to do the income tax now. Is uh, Leela, my, you know, ex-mother-in-law, is she going to claim the kids? And they, no, no, she's not claiming, you know, no, no. I said, okay, I just wanted to make sure because I'll go ahead and continue to take them as a deduction. So a few years later, I got a notice that I was being audited and I had to report 
it wasn't to the federal building because they had, I guess, that the Internal Revenue had rented what was had been a, I don't know, a Macy's or something. It, it was, you know, pillars and it was, but there, my hearing is not good, but I could hear, there was only men there and I could hear the conversations from a couple of different, that's partially my hearing problem is, <clears throat> I hear everything equal, well, equally bad, but I hear everything coming in at the same volume. Where if you don't have hearing difficulty, uh, your brain knows that you're sitting across from this person here, and that's or you're on a phone, and that's what it. But with the type of hearing that loss that I have, and other people that have this type of a uh, problem, everything comes in full volume your brain doesn't sort it out. But anyway, so I was there and actually I don't think I was listening. I mean, I don't think the person had sat down yet for me. And I could hear a man over here talking about his dependence and somebody over here, a man talking about his dependence. And I thought, this is, they're checking on, you know, people who are divorced and, uh, you know, claiming dependence or whatever. And I thought, well, I'm okay. And uh, then the person came and uh, said, you know, this is for such and such a year. And uh, you claimed four dependents, you know. And uh, they said, well, somebody else claimed them. And I said, well, who? Oh, we can't tell you that. That's. I remember telling this before in one of the, some, one of the videos, but I'll do it again because the odds are you're probably not the person, but that watched the other video. But uh, they said, oh, we can't tell you that's confidential information. And I said, uh, well, how do I know? <clears throat> you know, and it was like, no, that's confidential information. Well, then you're saying that well, who claimed we can't tell you that's confidential? I said, well, uh, my ex-wife worked a little bit that year. She might have claimed them as dependent, but our she told me she didn't, and our understanding was that I claimed them, and I claimed them all the other years. I said, uh, well, she didn't work the next year at all, but she's living with her mother. I said, can you check the next year? And uh, because if they were claimed then, it, I guess it would have to be. So they came back. Oh, yeah, okay. Now you you owe for two years, because <laughs> yeah, you claimed them and somebody else claimed them that year. And I said, okay, it has to be my ex mother in law. We can't tell you that. That's confidential information. So I said. Um, so what do I owe? Three thousand uh, dollars. You can just make the check out. I said I don't have three thousand dollars. I don't have fifteen hundred dollars. And I said I'll have to make payments. And so then I got a job for one year. On my days off at the one hospital, I worked for Menorah Hospital, and then I paid it off. Um, So what else did I, what else did I do? Probably some other jobs. I never was without a job. And I feel sorry for young people and people that are not young in today's economy and the way things worked. Uh, I could have, well, I could have worked for the post office department and made a career of that. I was hired, I took the test and was hired as a career clerk or whatever. I could have done that, but I told them to take this job and shove it. And the people there said, this is a career civil service you know, appointment or whatever. Uh, you don't want to do this, you know. And I said, yes, I do. And uh, 
Then I took the test for federal protective officer in the federal government. I passed it, and the federal government put, they were back then doing that, put it higher, I've, they did that for the post office too. I took the post office exam, and for two or three years, they keep, the Congress kept putting a freeze on no new federal employees, you know. Then finally they opened it up, I got hired in, and then I quit them after a few months. And then later on, I took the test for federal protective officer, passed that, and the federal government immediately put a freeze on hiring of any new federal employees. And then eventually they unfroze it for a little bit, and I was contacted and asked, did I want to work in Des Moines, Iowa? Uh, I said, okay. I asked the wife, you know, we'd have to move from Kansas City, Missouri, and Okay, let's do it. But they sent three names for one position, and I wasn't picked. And then after that, the federal government put a freeze on new federal employees. Finally, after a year or two, I just told them because I couldn't afford to take the job, you know, I because uh, it was a GS-4 and 5, I believe it is. So anyway, I take me off the list. Uh, and then about 5 or 10, and back then there was some, there wasn't Muslim terrorists, and it wasn't even, I think it might have been right-wing terrorists uh, here in the United States were bombing a few federal buildings and doing stuff like that. And federal government had been using contract security. So they started the Federal Protective Service. And, uh, but anyway, five or ten years later, I'm reading the local paper, whatever, that's before the World Wide Web, I think, and so I was actually reading a paper, a newspaper. Do I have to explain what a newspaper is? Uh, anyway, I was reading a newspaper and it said, ah, oh, the you know, the, the government, federal government reports that bombings are not happening at the federal buildings and terrorism isn't happening at the federal buildings and everything is just hunky-dory and great. Therefore, they are doing away with the Federal Protective Service. They don't need it. And I, I'm i not the brightest light bulb in the, wherever light bulbs are, but I'm thinking this is stupid. You're not, you know, you had a problem with bombings and terrorism and you hired, you set up federal protective officers and now you don't have bombings and things but you're doing away with the federal protective. And uh, what they did is they just went back to contract security but the federal protective officers who had already been hired in ended up being the supervisors and managers of the contract guards at the federal buildings and other federal installa installations or whatever. So you still see the uh, federal protective officers, you'll see a what looks like a police car with red lights, siren, it'll say police on it or whatever, and then it'll say federal protection officer or federal officer or something underneath and probably the guy is driving over to a federal building to make sure it's staffed and make sure they're doing the job and then maybe he's running out to some piece of federal property someplace that uh, doesn't have anybody there that maybe has a tower or whatever and checking that or responding to a accident on federal property or something. Uh, so what else did I do? And I can't remember. Had a lot of jobs. And like I said before, I really feel sorry for people nowadays. I would be really stressed out. I was, uh, you know, a union member of Boilermakers, the United Auto Workers, and where, where we didn't have unions, I was... Uh, somebody to be reckoned with. Uh, 
And I'm not sure I'd be that way nowadays because you're lucky to keep a job. But I never had that problem, so. Anyway, it's silent. I guess uh, I'm not going to go outside at uh, 1230, but I don't, th I don't think any bullets will be raining down now from the sky. Okay, I uh, want to wish everybody a very happy new year. I hope we have a nice... Ah, uh, man, last year was bad. 2018 was a bad year. I don't see how 2019 can be much better, but I hope it is. I hope here in the United States that we can work some of our problems out and and start, you know changing the environment and working together and I don't know it's going to be I think it's going to be a bad year anyway thank you very much for watching